Cop Agri, is that something <laughs> you'd be looking at, Paul? Uh, a OTC market, I wouldn't buy it. I mean, I know wow. uh, Anthony's going to wring my neck uh, offline and he's probably listening, but in my experience, the minute anything is not trading on the main platform, it attracts an additional degree of uh, risk. There's the problem of uh, settlement, which is not always completely straightforward and so on. So I don't dispute the idea that the soft commodities could be attractive, but I'm not sure that it's for every investor. Well, you, you saw the success of that Clover listing last year, and as Anthony said, that share price up 86% since September when they first announced that that share was going to list on the JSE. Mm, yes, so in other words, Theory, not your the thing. implication, I guess, is that it was trading before at the inappropriate price. In other words, now, where it's kind of properly compared to its peers, it's trading at the right levels, but if you'd got in early. But I think that speaks to if anything the problems associated with the OTC trade is that it's hard to get accurate price discovery and I don't think that means that it's always too low I'm afraid sometimes it might mean that those prices in that environment are just not right or too high but you don't necessarily want to wait for it to list on the JSC to get a proper listing because by then you might have missed the boat well I'm not sure that you want to be going there at all until such time as it's properly traded and you know you can get in as well as getting out uh, I'd avoid the exit you know, OTC thing completely. But I do concede that if you know what you're doing and if you've been watching the thing and paying attention and you look at the way it's bid and offered on those trading systems, that you might be able to get a good opportunity. Well, Paul, we've had a bit of uh, relief in the markets this week. We've had Portuguese bond auctions, Spanish, Italian board bond auctions, all seem to have gone off remarkably well, but they appear to have been quite well orchestrated. Yes, now look, I think you can make that criticism, but I think the bigger picture here is that those bears out there in the market that said we were going to experience massive sovereign risk default in 2009, they said it would happen in 2010, and then 2010 they said it would happen in 2011, but the fact of the matter is we just don't see it. Clearly, if countries like this are getting bonds away at around the 6%, uh, sort of level. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, effectively, if you look at the yields as they are now for similarly dated paper, we have the Germans able to get and raise money at around 3%, the Dutch are at about 3 and a bit, and then it gears out from there all the way out to the Portuguese and others and Ireland at the sort of 6.5 level, and the Spanish are somewhere in at the low 6s or high 5s. So, I mean, the, the, the fact for me anyway is that this has really been blown up by far too much. I loved that comment yesterday from Wayne McCurry about how this thing is like when your teenage son comes home drunk for the second time. In other words, it's not something that you're exactly happy about, but it's not something that you know not how to deal with. And like your teenage son coming home drunk, <laughs> I'm sure we're going to have more of these bond auctions going on, so it is going to be a recurring Yeah, because theme. the announce involved here, I think the Spanish raised sort of 1.3 billion euros or something, so it's very small money. It's like the market cap of Pioneer Foods, you know, that's being raised. And it is part of an ongoing program, and we know that the bailout funds at the background are there to provide cover for those that are finding it difficult to raise money directly. So I think the long-term implication of all of this is that the European Union will pull together as an economic bloc rather than you know, bursting asunder as some of the skeptics thought it would. Uh, well, moving on from there, retail sales uh, appear to have been pretty good in December. We had Mr. Price's numbers out today. Mass Mark came out with some numbers yesterday. Shop rights perhaps slightly disappointing on uh, Monday or Tuesday because that share price came under a little bit of pressure then. Look, I mean, the big picture appears to be that retail numbers are coming in at sort of 10% plus. So we're not seeing stellar results growth, which is not perhaps what we expect. But we know from our conversations with these retail specialists like Sid Vianello and others is that you get that kind of compounded effect or the gearing effect. So in other words, if you've got earnings expectations of around 20 and you get sales growth of 10, then you're in the right sort of ballpark. I, I, all I'm saying is, and we know this, is that the, the retailers did very well. They were the leading performer. One of the main reasons why the market now is at a level comparable or even close to where we were before at the market's all-time highs in 08. The retailers have really lifted us there. So, I mean, they're justifying their ratings, but some of them will point a little and others will exceed expectations a little. All in all, I guess we're getting what we're looking for. But th those prices, as you say, quite full at this stage. So. While we would expect mm. the market to continue going higher, it's not going to be the retailers. Unless, of course, we get some kind of uh, sustained sort of economic uh, V-shaped 
further excitement, sharper than expected economic growth in the Eurozone and in the US, the market rises, the recovery is seen to be coming sooner. Higher commodity prices in South Africa experiences a kind of economic boomlet, which I guess is not out of the question. I mean, we're now in the same frame of mind as we were in 04, 05, except that we've advanced forward and we're now in the sort of post meltdown recovery phase. And who knows, it might go better than we expect. Anglo Platinum uh, expects headline earnings per share to be 560 to 580 percent higher. I had to sit and actually work this out because they just gave us the numbers, they didn't give us the percentages. You know, the numbers are quite tricky to understand and I know we're short of time, but the reality here is that people couldn't understand why this thing can trade at 750 rand a share when they're making no money. But the fact is earnings have been rising sharply and we now can see this Last thing. Last year they fell sharply. Well, they've been bouncing around and each half year they kind of come in, but the long term picture is it appears they can make somewhere between, you know, 50 and 60 or 70 rands a share. So the share price is not unjustified. It's just taking time for it all to come to fruition. Lots of the, the platinum plays. Do you like Anglo plants? Would you rather go for perhaps an implant? We prefer Impala, but I'm not quite sure why some days because, you know, we've got the Zimbabwe factor, which is supposed to be an upside uh, little plus extra rider, but I'm not quite sure when it gets paid.